is not going to be decided by these three gentlemen up here. It's really going to be decided by the people who are actually probably not even in this room. Um, so I'd like to make sure we have time to hear the voices of everyone here. Um, the nine years that I've been in Portland, there's been this idea that we're on the cusp that like we are going to be achieving something. Seven years ago, I, I attended a, a panel at Reed College with Nan Curtis and Chaz Bowie. And at that, Chaz brought up that very same point that in the many years that he had been here, Chaz Bowie is a writer. Uh, he writes, he used to write criticism for the Mercury and um, has written some pieces for uh, the Feldman Gallery and a few other places in town. And he brought up a point at that, that panel that he had heard in the years he had been here that Portland is on the cusp of something. Um, and that the crescendo never comes. And so I, I'd really like to address that in some ways, or at least uh, that we have a moment to reflect and be self-aware that this new art capital is something that may not actually come to us, that we may be Portland, and that we should really embrace that and figure out what that is. Um, there's nothing wrong with regionalism. It's only when you get into provincialism that you actually have a problem. And I think uh, Yo talked about this when he did his talk at it, uh, PSU, a critic from Chicago. And Chicago is in, in, in many ways in a very similar situation, even though it's the third largest city in the United States. Um, so I, I, I really think that I, I would like to just sort of like blanket the conversation in that as well as Peter Plagan's article. Um, beyond that, I think Portland is fantastic. I think we have a very rich scene of artist-run spaces that are for-profit. I think we have an interesting artist-run scene that is non-for-profit, and then in the very in-between of those things, where it gets the most difficult. Like, figuring out how to fund those spaces is really, I think, the, the, a, a place that it becomes difficult, not only trying to build a collector base for the commercial gallery scene. RAC has done a pretty fantastic job in figuring out certain aspects of that. Um, I think that they more and more are able to finagle their funding in such a way that not that spaces that are not non-for-profit yet are artist-run can get funded. Like there are mechanisms now through RAC that those spaces can get a little funding. And I mean a little funding you know, the, the largest grant at RAC is $6,000. And I will try to speak in, in plain monetary figures as much as I can, because I think we're always afraid to mention how much things cost. Um, and that's often like a block. Um, so the biggest grant that one can usually get from RAC is six grand. You know, six grand for a space like Appendix or Work Sound, you know, that would go a long way, actually. I mean, you could. You could do something that you had never done before, probably. Um, and when I say something you've never done before, often that might even be paying an artist. Uh, something that uh, is that the artists in the room uh, are chuckling because they realize that this is something that gets often forgotten. Um, there was somebody who today partook in a webinar uh, that got no money for it, even though everybody else paying for the webinar, people who facilitated the webinar were all on salary. And you know, these sort of things, like you can't eat exposure, right? You can't eat opportunities, good opportunities. You just can't eat that stuff. Um, I, I'm gonna really stick to my five minutes time. I think the Portland art scene is, in one way, this amazing place where people really want each other to succeed where we really help each other out. Um, I, I have been able to call, in my position at PNCA, I've been able to call upon my colleagues at PICA and at Reed, um, and even at the Portland Art Center when it existed, at Disjecta, and really get support. Um, gear, advice, equipment, um, those sort of 
those relationships that we have with, with each other are extremely strong. And sort of where we can go further, I feel, is really in the higher level of support through collections, if possible, um, and how to get there is maybe possibly through dealing with the crisis of criticism that is really this worldwide crisis. Um, I was just in Antwerp with Modu and some students from PNCA, and that is the one conversation that just kept coming up, is this crisis of criticism. The same thing is happening even in a place like Berlin, that there is just not the kind of fulfillment and digging in and really objectivity that we need in our criticism. And I'm just going to end my remarks there. Thank you. You guys can hear me? Yeah? Yes. Right. My name is Mondu and uh, I'm coming from a different perspective, you know, because uh, I was born in Africa and kind of traveled there and also traveled in Europe before moving to the US like 12 years ago. So, you know, I'm used to like being in different places, you know, so I sort of like have a broader view on things and uh, meaning that, you know, I don't mind sort of like thinking of different places in different ways. So that's why maybe I will have a different opinion from Mark. Even though, you know, like we had a very nice trip, like uh, we came back three weeks ago and we were here for six weeks. We went to the Documenta, we went to the Manifesta, and we went to Frankfurt, Berlin, Maastricht, Antwerp, Brussels, and Strasbourg. So, and we had, we, we met, you know, artists who can't make a dime and artists who make millions, you know. So, and we just go visit this creator also. And we are planning even a show in the year of, crea of creators, you know, in, in Portland, five creators. So, and uh, I've been running workshops for five years, and uh, what I found about Portland is that a place like that will never make money. That's, that's, that's it, you know. Like, I found that. Two years ago, three years ago, and I kept going because, you know, I, f I fell in love with the space and I fell in love with the young artists who showed that. So, but uh, so meaning that really the problem here is that there's not enough money and people, you know, to, to reach our goals. So, so how can we do that? I guess we need to bring the people in and the money in, and. Uh, and that's where I really want to, you know, put an emphasis on my ideas, you know. So, like for example, if you were to bring 2,000 people on a weekend in Poland and they all spend a thousand bucks, you have two million dollars. So, so how can we do that? You know, we can make a Vienna, we can make a festival, you know. I think the, the dish director Vienna is great, but it's like, you know, your neighbor showing you your, his backyard every day, you know. What's the point, you know? You know, you gotta see something else. So, so, and I think, you know, that'd be great if we can, you know, start thinking about putting together the Vienna of international artists. Because in the U.S., the only place that show artists from overseas is Miami Basel, and it's an art fair. So, and there is like thousands of artists in Europe and other places in the world who are willing to come to the U.S. and show work, but they cannot have. It's not possible in New York, it's not possible in LA, it's not possible in San Francisco because the market is not there for that. But Portland is beautiful, the food is great, we are welcoming, and uh, also we like to share, so why don't we do that? You know, why don't we find the money to bring people here and have, in five days, two, three thousand people to spend $3 million here, and then we have the money. So that's, that's my point. Leveraging Portland as a place that simply people want to be. Um, I moved here 13 years ago, uh, 1999, on April Fool's Day. Uh, uh, hit black eyes coming down off of Mount Shasta. It didn't kill me. I know some people are disappointed. Uh, anyways, uh, the great thing I've always found out about Portland is it is a city that values human capital better than any other place that I've been in the U.S. Uh, you mentioned Chicago, I was just there. 
I was on a, a big tour of the Midwest, and Chicago is a great city that has incredible amounts of infrastructure, great museums, great parks, great art. They're actually, their public art is probably the best of any city since Rome uh, during the heyday of the of the, the papal aristocracy, where they were where the, where the popes were actually running Rome. Um, but they see themselves as a second city, and to a certain extent, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, if you see yourself as something, you will achieve that. Uh, you can always do that. And what I've always seen, I'm a historian, I, I study the biography of imaginative and creative individuals, so a lot of it's art history. And what I noticed is, is that it's always the individuals who end up making things happen. It was Giorgio O'Keefe, in Santa Fe who put Santa Fe on the map as an art city. It will be individual artists who end up making changes to Portland because of their success. And there are artists who are showing internationally in Portland. There are famous artists left and right here. They seem to be moving here all the time. The difference is, is I think we need to sort of change our attitude and our expectations. Yes, more money is helpful. but how money is allocated. Uh, there's a difference I've seen in Portland that we talk a lot about community, and it is one of our strengths, by the way. What uh, you're talking about where you, know, you can go to another institution, you need projectors, great. They will, you know, everybody kind of knows where things are, and everybody will point at each other in the right way. There isn't a lot of barbed wire up in Portland, and it's different in Chicago, and it's different in LA, and it's different in New York, where the barbed wire is everywhere because the money is there also. The difference I feel is that when we have individuals who are excellent, what has happened in the last decade since I've been here is in order to really make a dent in Portland, you have to go elsewhere and basically focus your energy on things that will count elsewhere because that will, that will make things happen for you. And you use Portland as kind of a base of your operation. And when people are talking, you know, we're on the cusp of something and, and, it is, and it never happens, I counter and say, it's already happened. It's happening all the time. When Modu is showing in Harlem at, at, at an institution, it's happening at that point in time. But do the rest of us in Portland know when it is happening? Why don't we then ever like, like say it's happening? Like, we never say it's happening. We only ever say it's going to happen. It's always this thing that's coming. It's never actually something that we, like, until this moment right here and now, it's never actually an article in the Wall Street Journal in any press about it actually has happened. We have arrived, Portland. We have arrived. It's always this thing of it's coming. It's coming. It's because, because we are not a financial center, and we do not control major media outlets. And the New York Times loves to write about us. They have, they are stalking us like crazy. Uh, I go, I, you know, every other week I have somebody picking my brain for some article on Portland from elsewhere. And it's, and that's how they want to see it. They want to see us as a destination. So the question is, how do we leverage ourselves? Who do we say, hey, where you go? So what I did, when Peter Plagueis was here, I showed him around alternative spaces one day. Second day, first of all, I didn't really want to be responsible for everything that he saw and said and, and whatnot. I didn't want me to be the, the go past filter. I just gave him a pot of guide. I circled a couple of things like PNCA's gallery and the White Ox gallery because I figured he wouldn't get down there unless I told him he should go there. And he went to Pike and stuff like that. But having that sort of thing and say, this is where these are our strong, excellent institutions or, or at least spaces where things might be happening. And, and, and I think what has been a problem is Portland's had, when I first got here, people say nothing ever happens here because they, there was this almost this lack of institutional memory that Mark Rothko had had his first solo show here, that he was a product of Portland as an intellectual. Before he became a painter, he became an intellectual, which manifested and then allowed him to become what he became. We need to 
be a little more serious, at, or at least take things a little more seriously when things are happening, and get behind individuals and say, you know what, maybe what you're, do you're gonna do is gonna suck, but you show a great deal of promise and a willingness to roll up your sleeves and get better all the time. And at, when you, if you track an individual and you track how they're moving, in, in, and this is what I do as a historian, and it's why I've been good at picking out who's going to be an interesting artist to follow, I look at how, not just their work, I look at how that person learns and, and their willingness to just throw away things that they've done that weren't working or needed to change and to become more. And it's that willingness to accept and celebrate people who are achieving excellence or at least moving up, that they've taken an important next step. So, you know, uh, it's this needing to know what the score is and uh, that I feel is really important. It's when I talk with Brian Friso or other people, we'll sit down. Where I, I told Brian Friso, oh yeah, Mark Zuckerberg just bought a place in Portland. I met him. <laughs> this was news. And, you know, it's fine that he heard it from me. But we all sort of need to know that actually there are people moving here all the time who are game changers. They're already here. But are we engaging them in a way? Are we making our institute, are we hanging our shows uh, in a way that when they walk into the room they say, hey, you really value this particular artist. You didn't put 50 paintings on this one wall, you put five. And maybe you got 50 more in the back room that they'll open up and look at. Yeah, like, I agree that uh, Portland has become a destination. That's why I'm here, you know, so. And uh, also, so many other people you know, are really attracted to what Portland is doing in the United States, you know, as a city, you know, and, uh, you know, it's very clean, the food is great, the rent is cheap, you know, we have great school, PNCA for the last five years, you know, has become just amazing, you know, art college, you know, and also while you is here, even though you guys do sounds crazy, it's legitimate to stare, and it's a beautiful dream, and it might happen, you know, so we need, we need to really, you know, like, put an eye on that and, and you know and really help it raise like Virgin Atlantic is flying here now, you know. So 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 that like little sign that show us, you know, like how contemporary our city is and what we can really do is those possibility. Like if you have a PNL, Fijian had paid for it for sure, because they want people to come to Portland. You know, like those type of strategy and also, you know, one you know really difficult thing for the artists in Portland is to show their work to other people outside of Portland. You know, are, are what a better way to just bring them in? Are, are, do we have a suitcase fund? It's, it's something. Uh, I want to uh, you know, a suitcase fund is a basic thing that allows, you know, Portland needs to look at its artists. You don't own your own artists. You help facilitate that. No city owns its artists. It's a collection of individuals who are working, doing their own thing, and you kind of, help provide a little bit of this and that to make it happen. And uh, uh, one person who's been wanting to talk about this uh, and has really good things to say about it, uh, Randy Rappaport, you were raising your hand. I have to make one comment. I would really like to see and hoping and wanting to see like a great artist emerge. So I'm interested and want to Sure. 